Hello guys, welcome back to Writer's Tales Last Adventures number 34. This is Human Science. This is, we're in Bulgaria, 2014. Or Pol, Poldiv, I think it's that, uh, which, which part we're based in, of course. Um, a hotel has been opened up in Bulgaria, just in the outskirts of the town, really. And it's inviting many tourists in, of course, and everything else. Um, but also, young women, young people have started disappearing in the woods, like going off like tourists, British, American, you, you name it, you know, they sort of have gone missing. You know, ever since this hotel's been erected, they've been missing. And obviously this leads to, uh, you know, like where were they say? I think because, you know, some people have always said, you know, they've been going to this hotel, really just outside there, like it's nearly up inside ideal for uh, tourists, backpackers, you know, like a hostel type, host, hostel type thing, really, in a way. And the protagonist, of course, investigate. They sort of land outside, of course, and basically just find out, find out about it, really, and head to this hotel where they meet the madress known as Patricia Robrick. Robrick, uh, very sort of, a very sort of scared brain woman, really. Very sort of, she seems nice on the outside, but it has, like, has inner dilemmas, demons, everything else, and also a dilemma, you know, dilemma, some secrets about her as well, you know. You don't see much of the staff around here. Do you, you see her and maybe a, a couple of people hanging around, of course, you know, handling luggage, more than being a chef, you know, it's like more of those things, really. Um, until you find out what the secret really is. So, well, in terms of the cat, you know, like, um, where do I begin with this? So, so, the, so there's a couple of customers as well, of course, like a few people are staying, you know, sort of like maybe those couples, you know, are just visiting Bulgaria for what it is, really, sitting up in this hotel. Uh, the tourists, right. So, halfway through the story, you see a, some weird, some weird sort of deformed, so like some deformed uh, males, of course. And it turns out they are Nef Neanderthals, or like half human, half Neanderthal, like something like they sort of like a bit of a mixed breed thing going on. And apparently, they have been breeding in the cellars of Vault. Underneath there's like a big, large breeding station, like a breeding, like a breeding factory or whatever you call it, underneath the hotel. And that's where the tourists have gone. So basically, you know, these tourists are used are used for breeding. For the Neanderthals to to make the Neanderthals more more out there, more keep going, really, and that's what Patricia Robick's been doing. Her dilemma, of course, actually, how the reason it came about and how the Neanderthals came out. Uh, so, sidetrack to her. Apparently, she she went up to um, somewhere high, high in the mountain, somewhere like on a little small expedition, and she ended up being attacked by a bitch by a soul, like an again, like a Neanderthal man. He had actually been looking round up at the mountains and just basically caught her and basically just raped her and obviously she gave birth to ch some, uh, some children, of course, nasty Neanderthal children. And since then, she always, obviously she'd been trying, been doing a few bits and pieces actually trying to keep these alive actually because Neanderthals around, like in this sort of climate as well, at this time as well, they are sort of like prone to death because of the environment, because they have come from a totally different age, really. You know, frozen in time, of course, and actually just to adjust to, you know, everything else, pollution, everything else. So her idea is to, obviously, it's traumatic, and it's made a bit more traumatic, a bit more crazy. And obviously you think, you know, I need to keep these, these sort of people alive, so we need to keep, create more, make a bloodline. And, um, and obviously, for withstanding, you know, they need some people, young people, just to carry on, like, keep them going I think basically to mother them all the way through which is a bit which is a bit strange really so but the end of keep they find people like in their tw like tourists in their 20s very much only the women get are still alive the men are just disposed of and turned to food really some of them are turned to food some of them have used for various reasons even to uh, some nice furnishings as well some weird skin furnishings like rugs and many rugs actually like a very like stuffed skinned rug which is strange. It's not really the best one. It's heavily stitched and badly done together. Curse of the Neanderthal's worst stitching practices and everything else. It's strange. Yeah. Um, so, once the protagonists find out about this, of course, they obviously 
uh, basically talks things into Robic, really, and you, you know, and, she, and she's just basically like, you know, no, 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 revolution. This is all. This is what it is. All, all this thing, my, 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 all this all thing. These, these need to survive. And apparently, and it comes to the question like, you know, would these actually live on? Really, I think. Well, obviously, they, they need to go because they don't fit well in this world. Really, they don't. They can't survive on their own in terms of this environment that they're sort of getting used to. It's like, it's like going out. You know, if you're used to to British weather. Then you move, then you move abroad to like heavy, high temperatures in the sun. Really, sometimes that can be a bit, you know, like have the sun every single day. Really, like you know, and obviously you get constantly burned. And also, you know, so having through temperatures. Really, so that's a bit of an allergy as well. That's all sort of works in a way. Really, you know, like similar with this one, and so you know, sort of like fresh eyes and nose, and also how their organs work. Really, at this point, really, because you know. Just depends really, because you know, back in the day it was barren land, everything else, you know, fight, fighting, you know, killing mammals and stuff, you know. So it's basically like they sort of they have their own tendencies as well, of course, but also just you know, try surviving that thing, of course. In the end, though, uh, Robic kills herself, she jumps off from a water, like near a nearby waterfall actually, and just plummets to death, of course. She just, just decides to take her own life, really, unfortunately. Um, the animals they slowly die out, of course, you know, with no one there. But also the tourists as well, who actually, in actual fact, actually are killed, of course, due to the, you know, due to the experiment. You know, the idea of, you know, like, again, raping women and breeding, it's like not really the best. You know, the, you know, the animals are human, of course, sometimes it doesn't really work well. But also, uh, Robic also had been expecting an accelerator thing, of course, like make the birthing more faster. Like, rather than wait for nine months, you basically accelerate for about maybe a couple of days, maybe a week or so. You know, it's accelerating the birthing process. And that doesn't work, because that's, fa that's fatal. You know, sometimes, some, maybe a couple might survive, of course, but a lot don't. They end up like in, like in a bloody mangled, mashed up fetus that comes out or something like that. And the, obviously the so-called hosts, really, are dead. Of course, they don't survive the birthing process whatsoever, because it takes a toll on their organs as well you know it really can't you know that much acceleration just doesn't really you know it can't stay on the human body and that's what happens really so basically all these so basically the tourists are dead so no one really survives after that really you know i think there is one one that one that actually survives at the end really and she just basically just is moves on you can write about it of course you can tell the tales make a documentary about it that sort of thing uh, but, you know, whatever it does, you know, it's like, some, you know, beware, beware of what this might, you know, this, you know, this sort of story, you know, your story is and everything else. And that sort of ends, ends really, that sort of thing. So, Humantine. So this is another one that's actually written. However, there's a different, there's a very strong difference with this one. So, it's a work entitled it's called Return of the ne Neanderthal. Uh, sort of a symbol, well, sort of a symbol, symbol of uh, a thing, really. Of course, you know, like Neanderthals run, the, run like a little business or something like a tiny empire or anything, and things just go really go haywire, really. But it was a simple story. That was that was like, again, play with sci-fi and also people like from different times and stuff. You know, a different, totally different place. You know, different time, different time zone, really. And that's what really, really what that story was. Coming to this, of course, I decided to really amp up, you know, the adult factor in everything else, as you can tell from what I've been what I've been saying. Um, there's a few things that come out of it. The first thing first was a um, original draft version of Wrong Ten Six Last Resort, and this is actually uh, was a like a like a, a very first draft or something that appeared on IMDb um, while it originally became. So the idea, of course, you know, uh, most of the people have been like most of the women in, the, in that film have been killed, of course, you know, by a barbed wire and limbs ripped off and everything else. But in the original, one of the original scripts or drafts or anything said that they survived and also are just, um, let's, let's just say horribly just raped to death, I think. And it's just like, geez, no, no wonder that, that draft never went, never went, went, went far away with that one. Um, as much how pff, a bit crazy and bit, in a bit more heavily pornographic it is really one, wrong turn six in places, you know, it's sort of like, you know, something like that might actually be, you know, if, if, if I'm looking for more harder edge 
video nasty type style. I can probably just go with that, really. Uh, human science, the title, I changed it to that, really. Um, I don't know where it came from, a painting or something, or a line. I don't really know, actually, but human science just basically just came there, really. Um, um, what else? You know, nothing, really, nothing else about that, but it was an old story that actually I really just shoved a little meat in and basically out comes this, really. You know, you know, uh, give it that sort of adrenaline rush and, and you know, and basically just plug it in through little, little things, really, and boom, you get this story, you know. As much as it was a very, very simple sci-fi type story in the beginning, now it's just become like a, you know, hotel video nasty slasher thing, really. Hint to your last house I left, I <laughs> spit in your grave. Mixed together with some slasher stuff as well, so it's like, yeah, probably. And... Yeah, it just worked. It just sort of, I don't know, it just, it's one of those things, really. Like, it's one of those um, heavy stories, you know, like, sort of, you know, one of those that, that, that could be there, but also goes a bit too far in terms of its graphic content and anything else. Uh, but it's just there, really. Again, bringing out the graphic stuff on it as well. I mean, I talked about uh, bits and pieces beforehand. But I think more so around here, you get more graphic, there's more video nasty graphicness throughout some of these stories really. I think more so a little bit down the line there's gonna be another story that comes up really that's sort of sim a bit similar really. Uh but we'll get there eventually. That's it, human science. Thank you guys for watching. As always, see you for the next video and goodbye.